So real quick, I have to explain what this video is that you're about to watch. I actually make these videos uh, sometimes relatively far in advance. Like I've been uh, traveling a bit uh, this you know past couple weeks, so I've been forced to make these videos in advance. I made a video on Frank Clark uh, only for him to then, I believe it was the, the very first day that I had left uh, my apartment for him to get signed by the Denver Broncos. So I'm going to give my quick thoughts on the Denver Broncos signing him, and then I'm just going to let the video play. So you'll hear me speculate about what would be a good contract or not later on in the video, which uh, doesn't age very well. But, you know, I figured you might still find it interesting. But first, uh, you know, the contract you see on the screen, the one year, five and a half million, I actually feel like is a very, uh, very good deal. I think this is actually a great deal by Denver uh, and, you know, very underpaid for what I think he brings to the table. Listen, uh, you know, again, and we're going to get into it in a second, that contract that the Chiefs paid him, obviously he didn't live up to that, but he's still a good player as we're going to discuss in this video. And for only five point uh, five million, I think it's a great deal, uh, great sort of one year flyer for the Broncos to take. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the signing. Let's get into just the player himself. So I think Frank Clark's a very interesting player. He's someone who, you know, over the course of his career, uh, I think probably is most known for how much the Chiefs traded and paid him uh, at a certain point. They gave up a ton of draft capital to pay him a ton of money from Seattle. Uh, they also, you know, you see uh, his cap hit in 2020 was 19 million. It was 25 million in 2021, uh, and it was uh, still a pretty sizable 13 million in 2022. If you look over here, these are his pro football focus grades, and you see that really he never was quite as good in. Kansas City as he was in Seattle. He came off a legitimately really good season his last year in Seattle. A 77.4 grade is great. However, the past four years, he did not live up to the contract. And really, in 2020 and in 2021, he had very disappointing years. A 54.3 grade uh, is just not a good grade. I mean, he just wasn't a very effective player those two years if you're someone who pays attention to PFF grades, which I am. Now, again, uh, 2019 and 2020, there was value there. He's not a bad player, and he's never been a bad player, but he's also never really been elite out outside of Seattle. Well, no, that's not actually true. If you look at his game-by-game -game box score stats just in the playoffs, he's a much better playoff performer than he is in the regular season. Uh, 13 and a half sacks in the 17 games he's played. So basically a full season over the course of his career and 13 and a half sacks. Obviously, the most notable one that he had was uh, back in 2020 when he had, uh, you know, or 2019, excuse me, actually, 2019 uh, season, uh, which took place in 2020, uh, where he had five sacks in those three games, including a crucial one in the Super Bowl. So, uh, and, you know, he had three against Houston. So, definitely had some real impact there. So, at the end of the day, I think a lot of Kansas City Chiefs fans kind of view this signing in this trade, I should say, as more of a, okay, in a vacuum isn't an overpay, sure, but they at least got good production in their Super Bowl runs with him, and at the end of the day, that's all you can really ask for, is guys who show up when the you know, games matter most. Going over to the film, well, how do we feel about him, though? How good is he as a player, and should a team still, you know, is the tape better, potentially? Well, you know, what is the case with him? Let's watch some film and talk about it. I have to be honest, a lot of his sacks are kind of plays like this. A lot of his pressures end up being stuff like this. I'm not saying all of it, but there's definitely a sizable chunk that are, uh, which there's two ways you could take it. But first, let's show the play before I explain my thoughts on it. So it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block with a left tackle on Clark. That's the way this play is going to work. And just watch what happens. As you see, Burrow takes a snap. Clark kind of gets stopped at the line there. But then after Burrow starts to get outside the pocket, Clark eventually gets over and makes the sack. And like I said, there's two ways you could take this. I think the most common way will say, listen, uh, he had a lot of time to get there. That was, you know, more so just the play took a while for it to happen. It was more so the immediate pressure that nearly got Burrow down that deserves the credit for it. Yes, he gets credit for the sack. Frank Clark does. But how much did he really have an impact there? But there is the other side of the coin, which is he's a high motor player. And the fact that he was still working that late into the play, there is some benefit in that as well. So you could argue either side there. 
Also going over to something like this. So what's going to happen on this play is it's going to be, uh, you know, again, a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a left tackle right here. And a pretty good one, I ha have to say. This is Trent Williams, who is going to be going up against. A guy who is known for being maybe the best player in football. Right when this play begins, you're going to see, I think he does a really good job here of kind of understanding what the situation is. And maybe this is part of why Frank Clark uh, tends to do better in the postseason is he is someone who, you know, listen, when you get into the playoffs, you're going to be more likely to be playing against good players. You're going to be going up against good tackles. And it makes me wonder if, you know, he's someone who actually can beat good tackles at a higher rate than he can uh, other players, even if maybe he can't beat bad tackles at a higher rate than some other players because you see how far he's getting to the outside here which honestly is probably the right play in this scenario a it's Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback so he's not going to really take advantage by being able to use his legs again he's not immobile right uh he is someone who can move so definitely it's it's not you can't just completely give up containment but you can be a little bit more aggressive in that scenario uh and also it's like listen if you just run right into Trent Williams, he's just going to stop you. Like, that's the reality of the situation. So, maybe if you can't go through someone, go around him. Again, Clark gets around him, and Garoppolo starts to scramble to the outside. Again, definitely some other stuff worked with uh, Clark to be able to get this sack. Clark didn't just beat a tackle straight up and then get to the quarterback. But you know what? That's the case with most sacks. It really is. Usually, there's something else that goes right for you to get the sack. That's usually how it works. A play like this, where it's actually going to be the right tackle, I believe, is uh, just has the snap count wrong. I believe this is the center's fault, because it seemed like every offensive lineman uh, is a little bit slow in making something happen. But what do you got to do if that happens? Take advantage. Watch as Clark's just going to run right by him and get to Wilson for a sack. Yes, it was a break. Yes, the tackle just wasn't ready to go. But again, there is something to be said for the defensive lineman who takes advantage of the opportunities in front of them. So, you know, the, it's weird stuff where it's like, listen, no one's going to argue that Frank Clark uh, wins with a ton of consistency because in Kansas City, he really hasn't. But he has made the most of specific plays. And there will be some legitimate flash plays as well. Like, I don't want to sit here and say he never wins unless it's unique scenarios. No, he can win. This is going to be a run defense play, but he's going to be unblocked at the line. It's going to be a handoff towards the offense's right. And watch how Clark is going to rush in, and he's going to make this uh, tackle. And again, it wasn't the cleanest tackle, but hey, got enough contact to bring the running back down. At the end of the day, that's your job. So there's plenty to like about Frank Clark. There really is. There's some concerns about Frank Clark the lack of consistency is definitely something to bring up and I think it's also fair to say I don't know if uh, he's going to be getting uh, handed out a, a 20 million dollar contract anytime soon I just don't but at the same time uh or 20 million a year I mean uh, but at the same time there is value in Frank Clark and there is added value in some of the stuff he's been able to do in the postseason and I could see a team being very interested in something like that so while he might not necessarily be a uh you know a superstar and maybe when Kansas City traded for him they thought they were getting more than they ended up getting from him I can totally see that as a real possibility but at the end of the day uh it's a very fascinating player and I think that he you know maybe this is a good thing now being a free agent he can go somewhere where people aren't going to bring up the contract they're not going to bring up the trade he can just go back to playing football maybe he could actually be a pleasant surprise I don't know but that's what I think what do you guys think let me know in the comments below always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching